Hi, I'm Brett Middleton, and in the next five minutes, what I want to do is explain to you the variations that are available in different shock absorbers. Now, this is specifically related to a Subaru, but it also relates to a lot of different models as well. And commonly on the Subaru range of models, there is a common problem in the rear suspension called stiction. Now, that is up to the, and including the MY07 models, before they went to the uh, wishbone rear suspension um, when they ditched the McPherson or the Chapman rear struts. So from 07 right back to the beginning, including Liberty and Legacies um, and the RS turbos and those models, they all had a similar design rear suspension. But typically, this particular factory standard Subaru shock absorber, you'll notice, it's got a small, and this is how you tell the difference what we're going to talk about, it's got a small shaft at the top, whereas this factory standard Subaru shock absorber has got a large shaft at the top. So what I want to show you here was, on this particular shock absorber, which was fairly common shock absorber across the range, in the Subaru McPherson struts, both front and rear, the working mechanism of the shock absorber is in the body. This is just a solid rod that moves up and down with the pistons inside it that obviously act on the oil inside the shock absorber to obviously have its damping requirement to control the oscillations of the spring. Now this particular shock absorber has connected at the top to the chassis, to the bottom, to the front hub joint with the, if it's on the front suspension, have an adjustable cam bolt on the front here for the negative camber and a solid bolt at the bottom. So of course, in an unsprung situation, this part is connected to the body and this part effectively moves up and down with the suspension. So the heavier this part is, the less likely and how fast the, the suspension can move over bumps and potholes and that affects what they call your unsprung weight. The, sprung, the unsprung weight obviously, and the sprung way is what have a big effect on the way the car handles because of course the lighter you can make the suspension, the quicker it will move. What Subaru did on the early model SDIs and then the later model WRXs, they actually then went to what is effectively called an inverted shock absorber design. So you'll notice that this shock now has a much bigger body of the shaft at the top and that's because inside that is the mechanical parts of the shock absorber. This is just a hollow body with a rod that connects to the bottom because as you can see, it's got a big nut on the bottom. So if you actually undone that nut, the whole assembly will pull out of the body and you'll have the mechanical acting part of the shock absorber here and the rod at the bottom. So what that does is it changes the dynamics of the front or the rear suspension of the car by changing its unsprung weight because of course the heavy part of the shock absorber is now at the top and it's connected to the body and effectively this is the part that moves up and down with the suspension which is therefore lighter and therefore it's able to react quicker to bumps and changes of direction. Now the point with this whole video that I wanted to show you was is a distinction problem that happens in the design of some of these shock absorbers. When it's a Subaru, particularly on the rear suspension, travels up and down and obviously this part goes up and down like that and it'll come back out because it's a gas charged shock absorber so the gas forces it back to its fully extended rate. Over a period of time, obviously the bearings inside here will tend to wear out because that's a, a bush type bearing which takes the load of the shock, shock absorber trying to bend in its action. Now in the rear suspension of a Subaru, particularly the Impreza WRX model and STIs, when that shock absorber goes up and down, it actually wants to go through an arc. So of course it puts a lot of load on this bearing. If you've got an old model Subaru and you come up to a set of traffic lights and you say go 1001, it almost feels like someone slightly nudges you in the rear suspension. And you might not know what it is, but you'll think, well something's moved in the back of my car. But what it is, is when you come to a, a dead stop, the suspension might be sitting in that position. You come to a stop and then it just moves up a little bit. But what it is, is actually this sticking in this side of this bush because the shock absorber is effectively worn out on the outside bushes and it makes that funny nudging move in the rear suspension. So what I wanted to get to the point of here is explaining to you why it happens, how to overcome it and the difference in the design of shock absorbers over why it might be evident on your particular model Subaru. So if you've got a Subaru um, STI models, later model WRXs, I think it's the 04 onwards, they'll have this type of shock absorber. If you've got that funny 
nudging feeling in the back of your car when you come up to a dead stop or a set of traffic lights and you think something moves, that'll be this shock absorber having been worn out. The downside is in that you will have to replace the shock absorber to fix it. If you replace it with a factory standard part over another period of time, sooner or later will have the same problem again. The good thing is, is you know what the problem is and you know how to fix it because often a lot of people don't obviously know what's causing this weird movement in the rear suspension. The other alternative is you can change to a complete replacement shock absorber. Now this is a Bilstein shock absorber, it's one of the shocks that was a coil over replacement. I've taken the spring and the hat off the top, but you can see it's got adjustable platform which compares favourably to an aftermarket compared to a factory standard one. Again, it's an inverted shock absorber design where the body of the shock absorber is in the top. But in the case of an aftermarket shock absorber, obviously it's a more of a performance based shock absorber. It's got a better quality bushing here. And the really good thing is, is over a period of time, if it does wear out, you can actually pull this all apart by pulling the fittings off the bottom and dismantling with the shock absorber and get it repaired and get new bushes fitted. So there you have it. You now understand now the difference between classic type of shock absorber like this, Foresters, GT, early model Liberties, early model WRXs, later model Subaru WRXs and SDIs with the what we call the upside down shock and then the alternative of replacing your shock absorber with an aftermarket one, a Bilstein or you can use a Teen or something similar. A final word of advice, if you're changing to a complete replacement aftermarket set of shock absorbers, ask your supplier one important question. Can they be rebuilt? Can you buy parts for them? And it can it be done in your local country? Obviously here in Australia, there's a lot of, like other countries in the world, there's a lot of imported Taiwanese, Chinese knockoff different designs. Some of them are really competitively priced, which downright are just absolute junk. You're better off sticking to a factory replacement component because they just won't last. You can't buy parts for them. But if you stick to the well-known brands, obviously like Bilstein, Team, and these other ones, you can buy parts, you can get them serviced, you can get them fixed, and most importantly, they've got local support for you to meet your needs. So if in the case you want to change the valving, or you want to change the shock ratio, or something like that in the dampening settings, you can do it to meet your needs. So there you have it. Hope this helped with a little bit of information, obviously to help you more about your car in the future or in the past. I'm Brent Middleton. Of course, there's a hell of a lot of other technical information you can download and get off our website, YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, our online forums. There's a whole heap of audio files. Or you can just pick up the phone or send us an email. At the end of the day, we're here to help you understand more about your car, wherever you are in the world. Thanks for watching.